Today, we're going over Motion Array to see if you can actually create better videos using their editing assets and whether or not it's actually worth it for filmmakers and creators to invest in their platform. But before I begin, I'm gonna get something out of the way so I don't waste anybody's time. If you are a creator or an editor that doesn't use a lot of editing assets at all in your videos, like no text animations, no transitions, no backgrounds, nothing like that, or you just make them yourself, then Motion Array is probably not gonna be good for you. They go off of a monthly or yearly subscription, and if you cancel, you can't reuse the assets or keep using the assets after your subscription has expired. So other platforms with a one-time purchase fee for your editing assets might be better for those kind of people. So if that's you, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. But for everyone else, if you are a production company that has multiple clients that need different editing styles and assets for their videos, or if you're a creator with a YouTube channel or whatever, and you just wanna switch things up frequently, then you might actually find Motion Array worthwhile to subscribe to. So full disclosure, Motion Array has not paid me for this video. They simply gave me an account so that I can explore all the options and all the assets they offer. And I also have an affiliate link down below. I get a little commission if you guys sign up using my link but that's it. So let's dive into the video, starting with the types of editing assets that are offered. They break everything down into five different categories, starting with templates, presets, audio, videos, and photos. Let's go over templates first. Templates are for things like logo openers, transitions, or just animations in general, where you're replacing the default text or logo or the image with your own. Templates are supported in Adobe After Effects, Premiere Pro, Motion Graphics, Premiere Rush, DaVinci Resolve, and Final Cut Pro. RIP to iMovie users, cause Motion Array unfortunately does not have any compatible assets for you guys. So once you find a template that you like, you just need to download it and then import the entire project into Premiere Pro or Adobe After Effects or whatever other program that you're using. And you import the entire template project into the existing project that you're working on. And then from there, like I said, you're just replacing the placeholder text and images with your own wording, with your own logo, your own images. Now templates offer the most amount of flexibility for you guys who like going in to change up fonts, text, animations, effects, keyframes, and all that kind of stuff. If you're someone who hates building assets from scratch, like you're doing the effects, you're doing the keyframe, you're doing the, you know, the timing and everything, and you want someone else to do the legwork, but you want to have the option of flexibility, then templates are perfect for someone like you. My favorite templates to use are motion graphics, which are super popular. And I just love having everything in just one simple dialogue box where there are sliders, I can input numbers and change up text. Instead of other templates where if you wanted to change an effect, you might have to go in and just meticulously keyframe and time everything out that way. Personally, I think templates is definitely where most of the value comes out of for Motion Array. You're able to do so much with templates and you're able to just change a lot of things as well. And you don't have to build everything from scratch and just have someone else do the groundwork and then you come in and build on top of that. Especially if you're the only editor on your team, having to build out all of these effects, all these templates by yourself can be a really time consuming process. And with Motion Array, it's really easy to just find something that you you like and just import it into your own project and just go from there. Now, the only thing I would have to say about templates is that some of them can be pretty involved with like tons of effects, tons of layers, all that kind of stuff that will drag my computer down so that I cannot smoothly play back unless I do a render effects in and out. And that's not really a motion array issue. It's more of like my computer can't handle it. So if you're on a system that doesn't have the best specs like mine, then you might have to spend a little bit of time extra to do the rendering. So moving on to presets, they are similar to templates where everything is already built out for you and you just need to click and drag it onto your clip. But instead of importing an entire project or a motion graphic file, you're actually just gonna apply a bunch of different effects onto your clip. Once you find a preset that you like and you've downloaded it, all you need to do is import it into the effects panel in Premiere Pro or After Effects or whatever DaVinci Resolve uses. And once it's imported, you just click and drag that preset onto your clip. And like I said, it'll apply it like a bunch of different effects. Think of it as a zoom in transition where the transition is made up of one replicate effect, four mirror effects, and then one transform effect. So you're basically grouping all those effects together into a preset and then you're just clicking and dragging onto the clip and it'll apply everything all at once. All the effects are there, all the keyframes are there. You can save everything and just make it a lot easier every time you wanna use it. And again, why this is so easy is because you're not building anything from scratch anymore. You're just clicking and dragging and it'll apply everything for you. Motion Array has presets for text, animations, logos, backgrounds, even LUTs and a bunch of other editing assets. But I'm gonna be really honest. I looked through all of Motion Array's 
presets and I didn't really find ones that I would actually use on a, like a personal project for YouTube or for client stuff. Most of them are just super over the top and just probably won't fit my editing style. That's just me. Feel free to take a look around and see if anything matches your style. Now moving on to audio, video, and photos. These are all just stock assets for royalty-free music and sound effects and then stock footage and also stock photos. They have a pretty good selection of royalty-free music and sound effects that you're able to use and you can sort through different categories of music depending on what you're looking for. They also have a large variety of HD and 4K stock footage and high quality stock photos. However, I would say that Artlist and Artgrid are better options for royalty free music and stock footage. I feel like those two sites tend to have a bit better of a selection when it comes to stock footage and music and stuff like that. And if you sign up for either of those sites, you actually get two months for free using the link down below. And the last two things that I wanna go over really quickly, the first is the integrations tool for the Adobe ecosystem. With the integrations tool, you can actually browse for assets from Motion Array straight from your Adobe program. For example, if you're in Premiere Pro, you can literally have a tab open, a panel open, where you're just looking for assets, editing assets, templates, all that kind of stuff, a motion array, without having to open up a browser, go to the site, and then download it from there. And that's just another convenience factor that I really like about Motion Array, where they make everything look so seamless. And lastly, they have a video collaboration tool, which is really similar to the Frame.io service, if you're familiar with it. It's kind of like YouTube, where you upload your project to the platform, and then clients and team members or collaborators can go in and leave feedback at very specific timestamps and point out the exact spot in the frame that they're talking about. It's a really cool tool that is included in your subscription. So motion array, is it worth it? Like I said in the beginning, if you are someone who doesn't use these kinds of editing assets very often, or you just simply make them yourselves, you're really good at After Effects or just really good in Premiere Pro at making these editing assets, then you definitely don't need Motion Array. Again, once your subscription expires, you're no longer able to use the assets from Motion Array. But if you are an editor, multiple clients that have different styles, or you're just looking to switch things up in your videos constantly, then Motion Array could really be a great asset for your post-production workflow. They have monthly and annual plans for you to choose from. And if you're still not convinced, or you kind of want to see how it works before you pull the trigger, there's also a free version with limited amount of assets, but you can still download them, import it into your editing software and try them out for yourself before you actually subscribe. That's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, hit that like button. And I'm going to be coming out with more breakdown videos of like commercials, lighting, that kind of stuff. So make sure you get subscribed. Until then, my name is Alex Chung and I'll see you later. Bye.